Well, hello, my friends. Welcome back. I'm so glad you could join me today. It's uh, it's an interesting day for me. Um, I just found out last night that my dad ha- officially, officially has Alzheimer's disease. And um, for those who are not familiar with Alzheimer's disease, it is a disease um, that we don't really understand very much about, actually. Uh, what we do know is, we don't know what, it's, what it causes it, but we do know that the, the disease starts in the front part of the brain and takes away short-term memory and then eats away at the brain um, until all of the long-term memories are gone and then basically um, you forget to breathe, right? And you forget to do a heartbeat. I mean, that literally, that's what happens is that the disease eats away at your brain to the point that your body forgets to function and then you die. And you say, well, gee, that's, that's horrible. But the reality is that the person going through Alzheimer's is unaware most of the times. Uh, of what's going on, and, uh, and and unfortunately, I have seen it firsthand. My grandmother was one of the first female deputies in Sweetwater County, Wyoming. Uh, you can imagine that she was a firecracker, and you would be correct. Love that lady. She could cook like the wind, and it was such good food. Um. And, and I got, I saw that slowly all taken away. Now she never lost her sweetness. She was always sweet, uh, even in the end, but, uh, she didn't know who I was. And, uh, I fully expect that my dad will not know who I am. And I teased him and I said, look, dad, the good news is when you forget who I am, every time I introduce myself, I'll let you know that I'm your favorite child. And there you go. little humor for you. Morbid humor. Why not? (laughs) Which, by the way, means that because this is now uh, not just the third generation in my family to have it, the likelihood is overwhelming that I, too, will have Alzheimer's disease. So let's talk about how we can handle difficult life choices today. We will do a, uh, a quote Um, And we will read our spiritual reading today. And if we have time, uh, we will certainly jump into our four steps of success. And I will demonstrate how to use those. Look, guys, this is for you. If you're watching this and you don't think that you can achieve whatever it is you want, I've got news for you, my friend. You're wrong. You absolutely can. But it does take... It does take a commitment and it just, it, there's four steps to it four very broad, broad steps that have little steps in between, right? In fact, let me just check my calendar really quick for us today. January 7th. How are we at, on January 7th already? For real. Wow. So you may remember our good friend, Nephi in our spiritual reading and he was given a task that was seemingly impossible Um, and he said something that was quite remarkable that comes to my mind and I, I think that this principle this idea is good for anything any hardship that you will endure in your life and the saying says that Anything, any situation that we find ourselves in, there is a way to get through it in a positive way. There is a way to get through it and learn something from it. Doesn't mean it's going to turn out the way we want. It may be a very difficult lesson that we have to learn, but we can get through it. I'm going to share with you Uh, for a brief moment, I knew uh, at one point in my career that that phase of my career was going to go away and I did not want, I did not want that phase of my career to go away. I wanted to retire with that company. 
but I just knew I had a very, very profound feeling that regardless of what I wanted, one way or the other, I was not going to stay with that company. And I had a choice. I could wallow in misery and feel like a victim, which I certainly did, by the way, for quite a long time. Um, or I could take the bull by the horns, understand that that's where the direction was going, and do everything in my power to make sure I landed on my feet. I did both, right? There certainly was a lot of wallowing. There was anger for many, many years. Um, and it wasn't until I landed in my current role that I understood the full picture of what was going on. And so we can handle anything that comes our way, but we have to choose to handle it. And so this leads us into today, today's quote. Today's quote is success in its highest and noblest form calls for peace of mind and enjoyment and happiness, which comes only to the man who has found the work that he likes best. Notice there is nothing in there about money. Notice there is nothing in there about vacations. There's nothing in there about possessions. Success in its highest and noblest form calls for peace of mind and enjoyment and happiness, which come only to the man who has found the work that he likes best. I tell my son, who's 19 years old, the boss, I've already told him, um, whatever you do, do not compare yourself to me, right? Um, I have found myself in a very, very unique position. And the idea or, or putting the idea or the burden on the shoulders of my son that he is to meet or exceed where I am would be completely unfair to him. There, for, for many decades in the United States, there, there has been this feeling that the younger generation should always supersede and advance from the prior generation in terms of wealth and success. But I think that's a little bit short-sighted because at some point, someone at the top or somebody in the family will reach the top and how are you going to supersede that right and then there's a whole mess of emotion to deal with for the younger generation who may feel like they're not good enough because they can't duplicate the work of their parent or grandparent or whatever and so I told my son find what makes you happy and then live within the bounds of that career. Listen, if, if picking up garbage for $50,000 per year gives you satisfaction because you don't have people barking at you all the time and you're driving around in a, in a truck listening to music and that's what gives you joy, then just live within that $50,000 per year. Right? We may have to give up certain things like luxury homes, uh, vacations, extravagant vacations, etc. But if you're happy, that's the most important thing. So we're going to go ahead and post this on Twitter. Uh, many of you know that, that the Twitter account is somewhere. Where, where did I put it? There we go. Uh, Twitter account is Twitter no, I'm at Occam, aka the number 4M if you follow me 
you will get this quote pushed out to you every day. So we're going to write this out. Success in its highest and noblest form calls for peace of mind and enjoyment and happiness, which come only to the man who has found the work that he likes best. Napoleon Hill. And by the way, um, I, I know this is true because I, I'm doing what I love right now. And it, is not, it does not feel like work, my friends. I, I can't even describe to you. I wish I could. I wish I could describe to you how much peace and joy I have in helping other people when they walk into my office. I really do. But unfortunately, there's just not words enough to express it. And unless you felt it, you're, it's going to be hard to relate to. The best I could advise you to do for now, if you're not happy where you are, is to take, take some time during the day. Um, I try to take about 20 minutes a day and I do, I do a meditation and I think about all of the wonderful people I've met, I've spoken to, the benefits that have been given to me and I'm grateful for those. I take a moment to be grateful if you are in a difficult situation and you take that time to do nothing else but sit, close your eyes and think about your day and look for the positive things in your life, I think you will find your life, while circumstances may not change, your perception of them will. And you will find yourself much happier. So again, the quote of the day, success in its highest and noblest form calls for peace of mind and enjoyment and happiness, which comes only to the man who has found the work that he likes best. I hope you enjoyed that today. Okay. We're going to switch over to our spiritual reading for the day. As always, anything that has to do with a, a spiritual format um, I understand is a personal decision to believe or not, but if something brings you comfort, if something uplifts you or motivates you from what I read, then I think it's worth the time together that we're spending here. So let's jump in. We're going to set our 10 minute timer. Uh, let's see. And it came to pass, the angel said unto me, Look, and behold thy seed, and also the seed of thy brethren. And I looked and beheld the land of promise, and I beheld multitudes of people, yea, even as it were in number, as many as the sand of the sea. And it came to pass that I beheld multitudes gathered together to battle, one against the other. And I beheld wars, and rumors of wars, and great slaughters with the sword among my people. And it came to pass that I beheld many generations pass away after the manner of wars and contentions in the land. And I beheld many cities, yea, even that I did not number them. And it came to pass that I saw a mist of darkness on the face of the land of promise. And I saw lightnings, and I heard thunderings and earthquakes and all manner of tumultuous noises. And I saw the earth and the rocks that they rent and I saw mountains tumbling into pieces, and I saw the plains of the earth, that they were broken up, and I saw many cities that they were sunk, and I saw many that were burned with fire, and I saw many that did tumble to the earth because of the quaking thereof. And it came to pass, after I saw these things, I saw the vapor of darkness, that it passed from off the face of the earth, and behold, I saw multitudes who had not fallen because of the great and terrible judgments of the Lord. 
And I saw the heavens open, and the Lamb of God descending out of heaven. And he came down and showed himself unto them. And I also saw and bear record that the Holy Ghost fell upon twelve others, and they were ordained of God and chosen. And the angel spake unto me, saying, Behold, the twelve disciples of the Lamb, who are chosen to minister unto thy seed. And he said unto me, Thou rememberest the twelve apostles of the Lamb? Behold, they are they who shall judge the twelve tribes of Israel. Wherefore, the twelve ministers of thy seed shall be judged of them, for ye are of the house of Israel. And these twelve ministers whom thou beholdest shall judge thy seed. And behold, they are righteous forever, for because of their faith in the Lamb of God, their garments are made white in his blood. And the angel said unto me, Look. And I looked and beheld three generations pass away in righteousness, and their garments were white, even like unto the Lamb of God. And the angel said unto me, These are made white in the blood of the Lamb because of their faith in him. And I, Nephi, also saw many of the fourth generation who passed away in righteousness. And it came to pass that I saw the multitudes of the earth gathered together. And the angel said unto me, Behold thy seed, and also the seed of thy brethren. And it came to pass that I looked and beheld the people of my seed gathered together in multitudes against the seed of my brethren. And they were gathered together to battle. And the angel spake unto me, saying, Behold, the fountain of filthy water, which thy father saw, yea, even the river of which he spake, and the depths thereof are the depths of hell. And the mists of darkness are the temptations of the devil, which blinds the eye and hardens the heart of the children of men and leads them away into broad roads that they perish and are lost. In the large and spacious building, which thy father saw, is vain imaginations and the pride of the children of men, and a great and terrible gulf divides them. Yea, even the word of the justice of the eternal God and the Messiah, who is the Lamb of God, of whom the Holy Ghost bears record from the beginning of the world until this time and from this time henceforth and forever. And while the angel spake these words, I beheld and saw that the seed of my brethren did contend against my seed, according to the word of the angel. And because of the pride of my seed and the temptations of the devil, I beheld that the seed of my brethren did overpower the people of my seed. And it came to pass that I beheld and saw the people of the seed of my brethren, that they had overcome my seed, and they went forth in multitudes upon the face of the land. And I saw them gathered together in multitudes, and I saw wars and rumors of wars, some many generations pass away. And the angel said unto me, Behold, these shall dwindle in unbelief. And it came to pass that I beheld, after they had dwindled in unbelief, they became a dark and loathsome and a filthy people full of idleness and all manner of abominations. What is remarkable is if you've been following with me, uh, we actually just got done with the end of this record, which is a record of, of a people who are very religious and faithful. Uh, and unfortunately, what was just described here is exactly what ends up happening. What is remarkable is that we know that, that narrative as it is written is different from one person to the next. One person writes or speaks differently than another. What is amazing is to look through this record and just see how different that really is from one person to another. And we can see that Nephi literally saw exactly what was going to happen to his descendants to the point that they become eradicated. And that had to be heartbreaking. I can only imagine. Right? Now, there, there's some moments of joy. He, he talked about three and a half generations that were absolutely good people. But to know that at the end of the day, 
your descendants are going to get wiped out? That's pretty tough. That is pretty tough indeed. Okay. We'll stop our reading there. Let's review. Oh, let me check. Uh, let me check really quick to make sure that because we're coming up on opening time. So I want to make sure that we don't have any issues to deal with immediately. Okay, good. We have a little bit of time. So let's go ahead and review together the four steps of success. Remember that I am nothing special. I'm just a dude, right? There's absolutely nothing special about me. If, if I can have success in my life, having no mentor, having no clue really what I was doing, just kind of stumbling through life. If I can get here, being the train wreck of a teenager that I was, I promise you, you can get to wherever it is you want to be. Sometimes the hardest part is just understanding where you want to be, right? So let's go ahead and review the four steps of success. I'm actually going to pull up you know, I should probably do like a PowerPoint, right? And then just do the PowerPoint in the future. Um, but let's see here. Hold on. I'm going to go to my Twitch page real quick. So bear with me. Might be a little bit of noise getting there. The zombie. Get there. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to switch the view. This is my uh, Twitch page. It's twitch.tv slash OccamRazor, A-K-H, the number 4M, Razor. Um, and, and I have all four steps listed out. Now, on the web page, it is not in order, but I will speak to them in order, okay? So step number one in order is you have to understand what you want and the steps necessary to arrive at where you want to go. That's step number one. Now, part of that means that you're going to find the barriers and the blocks that you will have to overcome in order to arrive where you want to be. And fear is going to be a natural reaction to some of those challenges right? So rule number two is we can never ever allow fear to be the final factor in making any decision in our life. It is a tremendously useful tool in determining whether a goal is actually worth it to us or not, right? If we say, hey, I could do this, I just, it's just not worth it to me then we know we've got the wrong goal and we reassess. Number three, we must, absolutely must be willing to make the appropriate sacrifices to achieve the goal. And usually the bigger your dream, the bigger the sacrifice is required. Okay. And then number four, never give up. You may find defeat, many, many defeats along the way, a failure, which is more permanent, where we have to walk away from an idea because it just simply wasn't going to work out. That happens sometimes, but we never give up trying. We find a new way. If you follow these four steps, I promise you, you can get to wherever you want to be. Okay. So as part of that, we, we do have a goal of making it to Platinum in Legends of Runeterra. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up here now. And we're going to, going to continue our journey in on our way to Platinum. Okay? Now, the rules that we have for getting to Platinum are pretty simple. 
okay? Number one, we have to understand the deck that we've created. Better get these on before my eyes go bonkers. We have to understand the, the deck we've created, how it works, and we have to take the time to create the deck. And if we don't understand how to create decks, then it's okay to look at something somebody else is doing and then copy it and then tweaking it to our our needs, right? Number two, we have certain rules for the gameplay itself, okay? So rule number one, if the Nexus is open, even if it's just a one point hit, we're gonna take that. Very rarely will that, that rule change, okay? Uh, number two, uh, we want to go ahead and never get frustrated. If we lose, it's okay. There's going to be long periods of losses and then long periods of wins. It's the dynamic of the MMR or the ranking system. That's just what it does. So we, we, we're not going to get frustrated. We're, we're going to see if we can learn from every game that we play. And it may be that we look at the game and say, that was just luck. 100% could be valid. Remember, luck is a component in this game. Okay. But did we do everything we could do? Did we sit down and think, well, if I did this, maybe that would have turned out different? That's the that's the question. Are we learning? If we're learning, then we're in good shape. Okay. And so if we follow those rules, we should do okay. So and, and I will talk you through every play um, of the game here. Just to help you understand what I'm thinking. And maybe you can pick up a couple of tidbits uh, along the way. All right. We just finished getting our weekly vault. And as you can see, I have just about every card you can have because I've been playing extensively for, this is my fifth season, I think. All right, we're currently, so here's the way it works. I've created quite a few decks here, right? Um, what I do is I rotate through the decks. So I'll start with the deck that I feel will do well. Now, after I have two losses in a row, I then switch a deck to something I just want to play. And if I have two losses there, I switch again until I find a deck that seems to be working. Okay? So right now, the Fiora deck seems to be working. We are at Silver 1 with 44 LP, and we're going to update our stream to show that we are now doing Legends of Runeterra. There it is. And we're going to say climbing to platinum. Okay. And let's get going. This season, the main goal is to touch platinum. But I actually don't care if I stay in platinum or not. I'm going to play consistently um, every day and just see where I wind up. Um, I've always made it to plat four, and then because that was my goal and I felt good about it, I stopped. I'm just kind of curious about how high I could go. I'd like to know that. So this season, we're going to try a little bit harder. Now, also keep in mind that because I do own a business, my time is extremely limited. So I don't have a ton of ability to sit down and just grind. Okay, so we're only doing a few games a day, right? And in fact, I've gotten so busy, I haven't even been able to play on the Rift. So I don't know how that's going to work out. All right, just going to go lay, lay down our Fleet Feather Tracker. And we'll take our two points if he doesn't lay anything down. We don't have another card that we're going to put down next that we know of. All right, so now we have a decision to make. Still paint is just accidental. His hook is extremely valuable, correct? So we're gonna we're gonna bet that we can pull a three card or a two card here next. So I'm wrong. And because I'm wrong, we have a a, a big luck problem here. Okay, we've we've been pulling some really bad cards as far as cost. Alright. So now I've gotta make another decision. Do I block when he attacks? Or do I let him go? And I think the answer is we let him go because we don't know when we will have 
another card to lay down, right? We're just at the beginning of this game. All right, good. So now I have Egghead Researcher. I now have a hook, and that means I can get rid of Sparkle Fly. Okay? And I can go ahead and put forward my Egghead Researcher. See how that worked? Just by being a little bit patient, I've now created a much better scenario. Okay? And now the score is very close. I forgot to turn off the music. I always do that. Bear with me. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. Okay. So we we're now at four. And yet again, we do not have a card to put down. We can use concerted strike, but let's be honest, that's useless. So we're gonna pass. He should have hooked him. Oh, he should have hooked Okay. We're just gonna let it go. We're just having really, really bad luck on the draws here. Alright, the good news. We've got a Screeching Dragon now. And believe me, we will be putting Unyielding Spirit on him in just a moment. If not on him, then on the Stalking Broodmother. Um, unyielding Spirit on either of those two is absolutely maddening. Now the good news for him is he's got Lee Sin. So that will work out for him. So he thinks I'm going to pull him wrong. Um, I already know he's got Barrier, and I want to level up my Screeching Dragon on his attack. So there we go. We just did it. All right? That's all I had to do. Okay, now I will have the ability of doing Unyielding Spirit on my Screeching Dragon. So let's see what he does here. Because my guess is he's going to hook the Screeching Dragon. The problem is I also know he has the knife. But at this point, it's better to try to slap the Unyielding Spirit on than not. And he has exactly what he needs for the knife, which is four mana, right? Who's he going to hook? Now, that is shocking. That is shocking. That's better. <laughs> that's, that's more along the lines of what I expected. Okay, so now we're going to see if he has deny. If he does, oh well. It is what it is. We've been having horrible luck on hard draws. Okay, he does not. So this is excellent news for us. I mean, this is excellent news. So we're going to be hooking him every time. When we hit 8, we'll put the Mind Splitter on him. And that should do it. Um, let's go ahead. All he has to do is two spells, and I can almost guarantee he has two spells. Let's go ahead and drop our Broodmother in. We're going to do Scout and let her die against Lee Sin. And then we will attack with our Screeching Dragon. That's, that's the plan. All right, so let's put her forward. We're going to find out real quick. Ooh, that is super interesting. Alright, so now we're gonna hook him. So give himself one plus one. Give himself a barrier. See, the good news about him doing this is even though he's gonna level up and proc, um, I'm forcing him to use spells in an untimely manner. I mean, I'm forcing him to use it in a defensive way instead of in offense. So that is, that's good for me. Okay. All right, now I am eyeing Unyielding Spirit again, this time for Broodmother. So let's pass here. Uh, you know what? I, I lie. And go in the period. 
That's going to force him to, to pull Empyrean over my Broodmother. And the dragon will. This is just a bad game for, uh, for pulls. Oh, wow. Okay, and so in that case, he should hook Screeching Dragon. We should lose this. Yeah. It wouldn't have even mattered if he, if we got rid of his barrier with Concerted Strike in that case. All right, so we lost once. We're gonna play again with this deck. See how we go. Uh, we have some water here. All right. All right, we'll see how this goes. This could play many, many different ways. All right, remember, I like to have one through three cost cards. I have fours and fives. I'm gonna keep Shivana, or Shivana, I do however you wanna say it. And we got our one. So we got a one, three, four. I'm pretty happy about that. I'm gonna lay down my uh, Fleet Feather Tracker, and we're going to take our two points immediately. Anytime the Nexus is open, we're going to take those points. And even better still, we've got a second Fiora, which means we have her spell card, which is huge. Alright, we're going to give her pause. Okay. There's probably... She, she doesn't... Unless she has Flash Freeze, she really doesn't have a spell here. So I'm going to try to fade out some kind of spell from her. And if necessary, I'll, I'll put Riposte on. But I'm not anticipating what I need. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to put Riposte on. I bait out the spell. Okay, and now she can't be harmed, right? And I've got another Riposte back in my deck, so that will work out. Super interesting. I beat it out two spells. That is actually a huge win for me there. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and do concerted strike, I think. What have you got us into now? I think we will. We're gonna strike her. Do this. Yes. There we go. Alright, so now he's fully focused on Fiora. Okay, keep that in mind. He is fully focused on Fiora. Now I'm gonna drop in Shyvana. I'm going to hook him with the Fleet Feather Tracker. Well, I guess I could do Astral Protection for... Oh, yes, I can. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So let's do this. That's going to hit me for two. Okay. We're going to go here and here. Pull him in. Go here. And then we're going to go ahead and... All right, he's definitely hurting now. Too easy. By the way, that avalanche was not a bad play on his part. I've dressed for the occasion. Not a bad play at all. Now, I I used to use this deck with Vlad, but I find that Vlad is way too easy to kill. In my opinion, um, we're gonna go ahead and kill Rhina right now. 
So let's go strike an enemy here, and then here we'll have Fuhrer finish her off, and that will give me my third proc. Another yep. fine scar! Kneel before me! Oh, whoa, it didn't kill her. My bad. That was my bad. That absolutely was my bad. Holy moly. Okay, so we're gonna let him. What, what, what damage? He's gonna right now. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, um. Yeah. That's my bad, everybody. Just forgot about the tough. Just another win! Yeah, oh, yeah, now. That was my bad. Miscalculated it. Avenge me! Okay. All right, and my problem is now Vlad is going to be very, very tough to deal with. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put down the Falcon Brood Mother, um, and we're going to have him lay down whatever he wants, okay? Um, we need to do something for judgment. I think I lose. I think I made a big mis mistake there. Big, big mistake. Happens. What's he waiting on? Should be good here. Um, what I'll do is I'll use judgment and then block him. I'm hoping that he comes down right now. Again, that, all of that is fine. Again, all fine. Okay, perfect. Alright, so that's one, two. So I should survive. We can go ahead and do this. Might be back in this game. Alright, we're gonna go with Broodmother here. We can strike twice. Everyone please for the I'm rich. Okay. Oh, man, good play by him. Yeah, I think we about lose here. Darned it. If I can slap unyielding spirit on screeching dragon, we might be okay. He's out of tricks. I don't think he has a way to pull more cards. Drop down the Bible's box first, I think. I'd like to get two character cards down at this point. Boy, he's really thinking. Just take the points, my friend. Because if he has um, his his two cost card, that he's gonna be fine. I don't. Why did he? Did he have K? So let's... Okay, 
so. This. Okay. The winter's claw will be weak. This is actually okay. I'm okay. If he pulls a card down, I win, because I'm gonna put barrier on Vox. But he doesn't have to fear. He'll still be okay. We're gonna block. Another fine scar! Yeah. Alright, we should we should be okay. Dragon's rage claws to get out. Alright, we might win. This is a crazy game. I made a really bad call. We're going to do this. And we're going to do this. On Shavana. And that'll do it. Should be GG. I can't believe we won that. It's terrible to see you in that game. Wow. Alright, we're about halfway to gold four. Yep. Alright. Let's keep going. So we've got a one and one. And we'll do one more for today, guys, and I gotta get my business day started here. But uh, if you've joined us this long, thank you so much for sticking around and, and watching. Uh, this is currently the reason we're doing this is we I'm showing you the, how to implement the four steps of success. You can find this on the about me section of the Twitch page. Our goal is to get to platinum and beyond or at least touch Platinum this season. We've gotten Platinum five seasons before, so. This time I'm just interested to see how far I can go without stopping, even if we go back to gold. Um, all right, so we want one, twos, and threes in cost. We get three, four, five, six. It's okay. It's not my favorite. He's got Danged Teemo, but Fuhrer will take care of that. We've got a couple of hooks in this deck. So okay. Good. Now we've got two, three, four, five, six, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. So he's gonna hit me there. I'm gonna go ahead and create a dragon. In addition, I'll be able to remove this card. We now have two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is fantastic. We're gonna have to be careful when we use Fiora. Actually, I'm not gonna remove him. I'm gonna save him for Fiora, actually. Bad idea. Gets a dragon. So now we're going to drop in. Just kidding. We're going to drop in Fleet Feather Tracker. And then we'll drop in Fiora. The Tracker will deal with Teemo. Fiora will deal with Omen Hawk. So it's just going to be Fiora. And if we lose Fiora, we lose her. At this point, we've got so many dragons, it doesn't really matter. Let's drop her in. Now I'm expecting some kind of frostbite or something of that nature here on his part. I'm 
something that would inspire you. Okay. Let's go ahead and get a Timo. If it's a double removal. Yeah, so there's Flash Freeze. I have another chance to kill Timo on okay with that. Unfortunately for him, we do have Concerted Strike, which means I can still get rid of Timo right now. Ooh, and I can put Unyielding Spirit on Fiora, which I think I'll just do that. And that, that actually will be a good game. Ooh, good move. So now we'll go with Screech Screeching Dragon. So why am I not upset about the Fiora removal? It's because that was going to happen regardless, right? Mystic Shot was going to be there regardless. So now we're going to put in our Screeching Dragon. We'll remove Teemo. I have the scars to prove it. All the dang dragons got Vox. Okay. There is Fiora. Ooh. We might be able to do something cheeky. If he pulls down a card, he's in trouble. Alright, he didn't pull down a card. Um, still going to be in trouble, though. Because I'm going to survive with my Screeching Dragon. Or not. Bing. But I am forcing him to use spells he doesn't necessarily want to use. So we will pour both Fiora own, in. You must die. We see through all. And she'll grab Omen Hawk. One time. Just hit with a box then. This will be a good winter. All right. So let's put in the Imperial. I'll take six points, we'll tie up the oh, Nexus score. And you know that. what? I think I'll go ahead and just get rid of this guy right here. Alright, that's his last. He's out of tricks. Now he's having to survive on the cards he has on his deck, and that's it. So he's actually in trouble. Okay. And I'm just going to do this. And now he's in trouble because whatever he throws at me is dead. Right? So I'm going to take out the highest offensive uh, cards. That's interesting. What is he doing? He can only hit me for eight. He doesn't have any other cards to play. What's he thinking about? Really? Um, yeah, that was a huge mistake on his part. Like a huge mistake. So I'm going to go ahead, I think. I'm going to do card removal. Let's go see the Screeching Dragon in Shyvana. Right. He doesn't have judgment. 
So I have to worry about that. Um, okay, we're going to grab this, 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 this. Go. Shielded. Shyvana will proc. Yeah, I don't know why he didn't attack. Let's not ruffle our feathers. You need to take Nexus points when they're available. Right. Witness my true props. At this point, I'm not sure how he wins. Unless Sedgwine gets dropped in. Ooh, that's good. Um, but the good news is... Let's see here. Alright, let's see. So we're going to have to lose a good card. We're going to... That's what we're going to do. You know what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. Alright, so... We're going to strike him. With him and her. So we will use our scout as a ooh. Hi, how you doing? My is we'll, we'll go ahead and barrier her. So now she's gonna get barrier twice. That's awesome. She can go first. Oh. So not only is he going to stay, he's now going to stay. Yeah. Gone. All right, my friends. So again, everything is just a play-by-play, -play and you're just trying to think through the, the outcomes as you see them. And you can get there. So we're almost three-quarters of the way to gold. Uh, start off silver four. And we're going to call that good for today. And again, if you join me this long, thank you so much. Uh, I do appreciate your time, and if you ever want to say hi and you're able to catch me live, please do so. I'd love to tell you hi. And so until tomorrow, you guys take care and have a great day.